African clawed frog. The African clawed frog is a species of African aquatic frog of the family Pipidae. Its name is derived from the three short claws on each hind foot, which it uses to tear apart its food. The word Xenopus means strange foot and Lavis means smooth. The species is found throughout much of Sub Saharan Africa, and in isolated, introduced populations in North America, South America, and Europe. All species of the family Pipidae are tongueless, toothless, and completely aquatic. They use their hands to shove food in their mouths and down their throats and a hyobranchial pump to draw or suck things in their mouth. Pipidae have powerful legs for swimming and lunging after food. They also use the claws on their feet to tear pieces of large food. They lack true ears, but have lateral lines running down the length of the body and underside, which is how they can sense movements and vibrations in the water. They use their sensitive fingers, sense of smell, and lateral line system to find food. Pipidae are scavengers and will eat almost anything living dying, or dead in any type of organic waste. These frogs are plentiful in ponds and rivers within the southeastern portion of sub-Saharan Africa. They are aquatic and are often greenish-gray in color. Albino varieties are commonly sold as pets. Wild-type African clawed frogs are also frequently sold as pets, and often incorrectly labeled as a Congo frog or African dwarf frog because of similar colorings. They are easily distinguished from African dwarf frogs because African clawed frogs have webbing only on their hind feet while African dwarf frogs have webbing on all four feet. They reproduce by fertilizing eggs outside of the female's body. Of the seven amplexus modes, these frogs are found breeding in inguinal amplexus, where the male clasps the female in front of the female's back legs and squeezes until eggs come out. The eggs are then fertilized. The clawed frogs are the only amphibians to have actual claws used to climb and shred foods like fish or tadpoles. They lay their eggs from winter until spring. During wet rainy seasons, they will travel to other ponds or puddles of water to search for food. Ex lavas have been known to survive 15 or more years in the wild and 25 to 30 years in captivity. They shed their skin every season and eat their own shed skin. Although lacking a vocal sac, the males make a mating call of alternating long and short trails. By contracting the intrinsic laryngeal muscles. Females also answer vocally, signaling either acceptance or rejection of the male. This frog has smooth slippery skin which is multicolored on its back with blotches of olive gray or brown. The underside is creamy white with a yellow tinge. Male and female frogs can be easily distinguished through the following differences. Male frogs are usually about 20% smaller than females, with slim bodies and legs. Males make mating calls to attract females sounding very much like a cricket calling underwater. Females are larger than the males, appearing far more plump with hip-like bulges above their rear legs. Both males and females have a cloaca, which is a chamber through which digestive and urinary wastes pass and through which the reproductive systems also empty. The cloaca empties by way of the vent which in reptiles and amphibians is a single opening for all three systems. In the wild, Xenopus lavas are native to wetlands ponds, and lakes across arid-slash-semi-arid regions of sub-Saharan Africa. Xenopus lavis and Xenopus muellieri occur along the western boundary of the Great African Rift. The people of the sub-Saharan are generally very familiar with this frog, and some cultures use it as a source of protein, an aphrodisiac, or as fertility medicine. Two historic outbreaks of priapism have been linked to consumption of frog legs from frogs that ate insects containing cantharidin. Wild Xenopus are much larger than their captive bred counterparts. Xenopus lavis in the wild are commonly infected by various parasites, including monogenians in the urinary bladder. Xenopus embryos and eggs are a popular model system for a wide variety of biological studies. This animal is widely used because of its powerful combination of experimental tractability and close evolutionary relationship with humans, at least compared to many model organisms. For a more comprehensive discussion of the use of these frogs in biomedical research, see Xenopus. In the early 1930s, two South African researchers, Hilal Shapiro and Harrys Warrenstein, who were students of Lancelot Hogben at Cape Town University, developed a test for human pregnancy by injecting the woman's urine into a Xenopus lavis frog. If the frog ovulated, the woman was pregnant. This simple and reliable test was universally used throughout the 1930s to 1960s. Xenopus has long been an important tool for in vivo studies in molecular, cell, and developmental biology of vertebrate animals. However, the wide breadth of Xenopus research stems from the additional fact that cell-free extracts made from Xenopus are a premier in vitro system for studies of fundamental aspects of cell and molecular biology. 
Thus, Xenopus is the only vertebrate model system that allows for high-throughput in vivo analysis of gene function and high-throughput biochemistry. Finally, Xenopus oocytes are a leading system for studies of ion transport and channel physiology. Although Exlavis does not have the short generation time and genetic simplicity generally desired in genetic model organisms, it is an important model organism in developmental biology, cell biology, toxicology and neurobiology. Exlavis takes one to two years to reach sexual maturity and, like most of its genus, it is tetraploid. It does have a large and easily manipulated embryo, however. The ease of manipulation in amphibian embryos has given them an important place in historical and modern developmental biology. A related species, Xenopus tropicalis, is now being promoted as a more viable model for genetics. Roger Walcott Sperry used X. Lavis for his famous experiments describing the development of the visual system. These experiments led to the formulation of the chemoaffinity hypothesis. Xenopus oocytes provide an important expression system for molecular biology. By injecting DNA or mRNA into the oocyte or developing embryo, scientists can study the protein products in a controlled system. This allows rapid functional expression of manipulated DNAs. This is particularly useful in electrophysiology, where the ease of recording from the oocyte makes expression of membrane channels attractive. One challenge of oocyte work is eliminating native proteins that might confound results such as membrane channels native to the oocyte. Translation of proteins can be blocked or splicing of pre-mRNA can be modified by injection of morpholino and essence oligos into the oocyte or early embryo. Extracts from the eggs of X. lavis frogs are also commonly used for biochemical studies of DNA replication and repair, as these extracts fully support DNA replication and other related processes in a cell-free environment which allows easier manipulation. The first vertebrate ever to be cloned was an African clawed frog, an experiment for which Sir John Gurdon was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine 2012 for the discovery that mature cells can be reprogrammed to become pluripotent. Additionally, several African clawed frogs were present on the Space Shuttle Endeavour so that scientists could test whether reproduction and development could occur normally in zero gravity. X. Lavis is also notable for its use in the first widely used method of pregnancy testing. After Lancelot Hogbin discovered that the urine from pregnant women induced X. lavis oocyte production. Human chorionic gonadotropin is a hormone found in substantial quantities in the urine of pregnant women. Today, commercially available HCG is injected into Xenopus males and females to induce mating behavior and to breed these frogs in captivity at any time of the year. Amphibian frog Xenopus lavis also serves as an ideal model system for the study of the mechanisms of apoptosis. In fact, Iodine and thyroxine stimulate the spectacular apoptosis of the cells of the larval gills, tail and fins in amphibians' metamorphosis, and stimulate the evolution of their nervous system transforming the aquatic, vegetarian tadpole into the terrestrial, carnivorous frog. Early work on sequencing of the X. lavis genome was started when the Wallingford and Marcotte labs obtained funding from the Texas Institute for Drug and Diagnostic Development, in conjunction with projects funded by the National Institutes of Health. The work rapidly expanded to include de novo reconstruction of X. lavis transcripts, in collaboration with groups around the world donating Illumina high sec RNA sequencing datasets. Genome sequencing by the Roxer and Harland groups and by Tyra and collaborators gave a major boost to the project, which, with additional contributions from investigators in the Netherlands, Korea, Canada, and Australia, led to publication of the genome sequence and its characterization in 2016. Zenbase is the model organism database with the full details and release information regarding the current Xenopus lavis genome. Xenopus lavis have been kept as pets and research subjects since as early as the 1950s. They are extremely hardy and long-lived, having been known to live up to 20 or even 30 years in captivity. African clawed frogs are frequently mislabeled as African dwarf frogs in pet stores. The astute pet owner will recognize the difference, however because of the following characteristics. African clawed frogs are voracious predators and easily adapt to many habitats. For this reason, they can easily become a harmful invasive species. They can travel short distances to other bodies of water, and some have even been documented to survive mild freezes. They have been shown to devastate native populations of frogs and other creatures by eating their young. In 2003, Xenopus lavis frogs were discovered in a pond at San Francisco's Golden Gate Park. 
Much debate now exists in the area on how to exterminate these creatures and keep them from spreading. It is unknown if these frogs entered the San Francisco ecosystem through intentional release or escape into the wild. San Francisco officials drained Lily Pond and fenced off the area to prevent the frogs from escaping to other ponds in the hopes they starved to death. Due to incidents in which these frogs were released and allowed to escape into the wild, African clawed frogs are illegal to own, transport or sell without a permit in the following U.S. states, Arizona, California, Kentucky, Louisiana, New Jersey, North Carolina, Oregon, Virginia, Hawaii, Nevada, and Washington state. However, it is legal to own Xenopus lavis in New Brunswick and Ohio. Feral colonies of Xenopus lavis exist in South Wales, United Kingdom. The African clawed frog may be an important vector in the initial source of Batrachochytrium dendrobatidis, a sheetered fungus that has been implicated in the drastic decline in amphibian populations in many parts of the world. Unlike in many other amphibian species where this sheetrid fungus causes the disease chytridiomycosis, it does not appear to affect the African clawed frog, making it an effective carrier. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.